up, compassionate people? Welcome to Vegan News. Lots of stories today, but first I want to go over something. The reason I didn't do a video yesterday was part of my vegan family, one of my friends, his companion animal, his daughter, his cat, of 16 years passed away. She had to be euthanized yesterday. I went through the process with him and I took him down and I watched her pass away and it was one of the hardest things I've ever watched. I could feel her actually leave when she took her last breaths. And the whole time, the whole time I just saw this little guy and the day's gonna come when I have to do that for him probably. It's just really sad, and, but I feel privileged to have been a part of it and to have helped. So now that that's over, let's get to our stories. According to TMZ, Charlie Sheen has gone vegan. Again, like I've said before, who knows if this is really actual veganism or plant-based. We'll see as time goes on. I guess no more tiger blood for him, as was said in one of the many articles written about this. He's pretty much been on a health kick ever since he was diagnosed with HIV. He's on a cocktail of medications. He does yoga and swimming and all kinds of other things. He's really, it appears that he's really turned his life around and he's quit the drinking and the drugs from outside appearances and news reports anyway. I wish him the best and hopefully, you know, he has the possibility even though everything he's been through and everything he's done and the image he did have, he could turn that around and become a voice for the animals just like Steve-O did. I wish him all the best and it's really great to see more and more people finding veganism and finding compassion. The first vegan movie about race, class, and gender roles within society and how they play into veganism, The Invisible Vegan actually premiered in Los Angeles. Check out the trailer here. The modern day slave doesn't know that it's a slave. The food be thy medicine, medicine be thy food. The government encouraging people to eat foods that it knew would make them sick because of the lobbying efforts of the industry. And that's really reprehensible. I grew up in D.C. eating the standard American diet. I initially identified veganism as a white thing. It was because I didn't know my history. All I knew was we turned scraps into soul food, and I thought that was our only culinary legacy. It becomes soul specifically assigned to black people because in the 60s, black nationalists wanted to make the argument that black people had culture. We have culture in our language, we have culture in our clothing, we have culture in our food. Fried fish, uh, fried pork chops, fried chicken. Chitlins and chicken wings and oxtail and ox tongue and pig feet. Those were the things that were thrown away that Massa didn't eat. Those were the scraps that were scavenged up by certain slaves. They made do with what they had, but the fact is that we are no longer on the plantation. It's all love. It's all love. So I think a lot of people think about black folks' history in this country, it always like starts with slavery, right? But it really goes back farther than that to the continent of Africa. People were growing food, cultivating the land. They had crops, they had dirt, and they had seeds. So I can only imagine that most of our diet was always plant-based. When you look at traditional West African diets, they are diets that are low in fat. The World Health Organization admitted that meat was the leading cause of cancer. Kaiser Permanente is finally endorsing a plant-based diet for optimum health. So eating fresh, healthy crops is a part of our legacy, and it's a part that we should start embracing. I don't eat no meat, no dairy, no sweets, only ripe vegetables, fresh fruit and whole wheat. I'm from the old school, my household smell like soul food, bruh, curry falafel, barbecue tofu, no fish. You have no systemic candy, inequality, people who are being beaten down by the detritus of life. Access to healthy foods in this country has become a privilege instead of a right, which it should be. Cost is a big barrier for probably a lot of people. The federal government gives subsidies for big food to produce cheap food. 
So that means that it's going to be cheaper for us to get box macaroni and cheese or white bread. No human is really adapted to eat this way. This diet will cause increased rates of disease and death in us because we are less genetically adapted to eat these foods. A lot of people will find like the foods that they eat really disturbs their rest. These are things that can give you mucus at night. I'm going to sleep out. I always wake up. Well, you take some of that dairy out of your diet, you won't do that. Like, by not drinking that milk, by not eating any animal products, you are not participating in a system that causes harm. Vegans are in a position to be able to recognize the suffering of these other beings. There's no way I'm eating that. There's dead and diseased animals mixed in with the live ones. We live in this big mass production society where you just don't know where the food come from, to be honest. They are not feeding our children. We are feeding our children. There's the policy side of our health and our wellness, and there's the personal priority side. As a people, if we want to grow stronger and flourish, we have to be healthy. A plant-based diet promotes better health, less disease, and greater longevity. You need a clear mind. And to have that, you need a better diet. Power of psychology. You change your perception. No me. No If you change your perspective, fresh. Then you see new opportunities. The moral of the story to hold on to is our genius and our innovativeness. Just try to have a little bit more strategy about what it is you eat. And if you can do that, then you can find that you can stay steady about a number of things as far as discipline goes. We need more people that look like us pushing that message. more visibility to a lifestyle that is far too invisible in certain communities. I don't want to be an invisible vegan. The 90-minute documentary is packed with African-American vegan activists, including comedian Cedric the Entertainer, former NBA star John Sally, hip-hop artist Stick from the Dead Prez, medical doctor Milton Mills, as we've seen videos before floating around of him, and I believe he's been featured in other documentaries, including maybe What the Hell, I'll have to check into that. And many more are in the film as well. As you saw from the trailer, the, the film seems to center around dispelling the idea that veganism is a white thing or a privilege privilege and even seems to go so far as to present veganism and plant-based diets as part of the original African-American identity before that was stolen from them and they were enslaved. We'll see how the movie is and what proves to be true. I can't wait to actually watch it and review it and share it with you guys here on this channel. Hopefully the director or producers or somebody will reach out and send me a screener so I can give you guys an idea of what direction it's going in and if you might enjoy it or not. And that reminds me, uh, I have another producer director that reached out to me for a movie called Living Things. I will be doing that review soon. It's a 100% vegan movie that centers around a conversation with a family member. It's actually really interesting. I've never seen a vegan movie done this way and it's not a documentary. So that's also kind of a first. In Largo, Florida, DXE protesters disrupted the opening of Polo Tropical. The news report linked down below like all stories always are and will be again today and forever. <laughs> goes on to present the protesters in a bad light, of course, because this is a mainstream news station. They talk about how they were screaming about dead bodies, etc. And some of the patrons in the restaurant who were carnists had many things to say. Animal rights protesters strike the Bay Area again. First it was Chick-fil-A, now another fast food restaurant in Largo. News Channel 8's Jeff Patterson joins us now. He's at the 
Pollo Tropical. This is in Largo, right, Jeff? Yeah, good evening, Stacey. It was a kind of an incredible scene here earlier today, and unlike the protest at the Chick-fil-A, there were no bloody costumes here. This was all captured on video. Parents were pretty upset. It's the grand opening for this Largo Pollo Tropical, featuring a climbing wall, face painting, and fun, until this. I cannot believe they're here again. Vegan protesters came in shouting about how bad it is to eat meat. We see them. Melissa Benassi captured it all on video and wasn't happy about it. I think it's very inappropriate that they're doing this in front of children. Her children heard the protest but weren't impressed. It was a little chaotic in there when they were like talking. Everyone was like, can you please leave? Because they were just having, trying to have a good time. The protesters shouted their message but didn't get through to 11-year-old Jaden Boehner. They were yelling like, um, don't eat chickens, don't eat meat. And I was like, well, I love chicken. <laughs> um, a Largo police officer came here, looked at the video, took a report, but determined no crime was committed. Stacy. All right, Jeff Patterson reporting live. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's also alarming that you're feeding them that. She took out her cell phone and filmed the protesters. I Hopefully she uploaded it so we can keep the ball rolling. Thank you. One of her brainwashed children, an 11 year old, had this to say. They were yelling, don't eat chicken, don't eat meat. And I was like, well, I love chicken. Police responded to the incident and said that no crime had been committed because free speech, duh. But thanks for calling the police and raising the profile and getting us in the news. In Augusta, Georgia, a personal friend of mine and of this channel, who is a staunch animal rights activist and vegan, Dee Spencer, has made the news finally. She's been outside of a murder factory, a slaughterhouse, FPL Food LLC, for over a year now. Most of the time by herself, protesting, taking pictures, and showing the conditions of these poor animals and how they're transported in the trucks and what they're going through. I've been wanting to highlight her for some time and many other activists. And whenever a story comes up, I'm going to jump on it and make sure they get the recognition they deserve. She's pouring her life into this. She spends at least one day a week doing this, if not more. And it's incredible. This is what everybody should be doing in some way. There's always some way one of us can do something. You don't have to make YouTube videos. You don't have to protest. But just do something. Talk to one person a day. She will be at a vigil coming up, which I'll have more details of soon. It's on the 8th. I will be... In North Carolina at that visual on the 8th. The Animal Rights Conference, I believe it's in Virginia or Washington DC, somewhere in there. I will be going to that. It's like a huge international thing. I'll be there covering that as well. Uh, hopefully maybe I can meet a few of you. That would be really awesome and cool. And it's a trip I'm really looking forward to. It'll be my first vigil. It'll be my first time of being there and seeing what it looks like when they get there in the trucks and what comes out of the slaughterhouse. And finally, our story of the day is Hampton Creek, yet again. It seems that all of the board members of Hampton Creek have left, and it's just the CEO and founder Josh Tetrick left now. Apparently there was some dispute about the direction of the company. Stories seem to indicate from what I've read, and you can read through them down below, like I said before, and find out what you glean in between the lines there. But from what I gather, it seems that the cultured meat that he wants his company to develop has become an issue for many of the people on the board. I don't know if that's true. I fully support his cultured meat efforts as long as they're not using stem cells like bovine calf serum, which is used as a substrate to help to help the flesh cells grow of, of cows. I know they're working on chicken, so I'm not sure. Josh Tetrick has reassured many vegans on Facebook and other social media that the chicken feather itself was gotten from a chicken at a sanctuary. The, fe the feather had fallen off, so it was not forcibly taken. So the cells come from those and supposedly they are not doing anything that actually harms animals in the production and research of making this product. We'll see if that holds to be true as time goes on and more information comes out, but I'm hoping it is. Me personally, I'm not going to be eating any animal products for the rest of my life. I don't care if they're grown in a lab or not. I don't want the cholesterol. And also, a lot of plant-based alternatives, they're actually getting too real for me now. Like the Beyond Burger, I can't, I can't eat it. It's, it just grosses me out. It's too real. But I have hope that this will be something that can help with feeding our cats and dogs and, and other animals. Although dogs can be on a plant-based diet. But there's going to be other uses than just carnists that want to continue to get themselves heart attacks.
Well, that's everything today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Apologize for yesterday. It was a sad day. I know you guys understand. And some days I'm just tired. But I got a special surprise coming up tomorrow. You're going to laugh so much. You're going to love tomorrow's episode. I'm excited to do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Like it if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. Of course, I don't want you to do that. But, you know, the button's there. I'll see you guys Thursday. And don't forget, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I am going to Woodstock Farm Sanctuary in upstate New York. So the Friday show is iffy. But I'm hoping to actually get it done. We will see. If I do it, it could be from a hotel room. Eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. No matter what, love you guys. Thank you so much for watching, sharing, join the Facebook group, send me news, comment. I want to hear your feedback. Love you so much. I'll see you guys next time.